Hello everybody. Today I'm dimpling the side skins and bottom skins of the tail and all the bulkheads. So I use the DRDT2 again as much as possible. I the curvature is actually hard to do to use this one, but uh, yeah, I can use it wherever possible. The rest I will do with the uh, squeezer. I tried here; it is possible, but not all the not all the drill holes can be dimpled this way. So uh, I decided not to jeopardize the um, yeah the skin. But as you can see, it goes quite fast. Although there are a lot of holes to be dimpled. And also there is actually one hole that should be dimpled with a bigger size. It's uh, where the rudder cable comes out of the skin. You can see it actually it's in the uh, in the back end there. And it just says on the drawing, I, I think I found it out here. Yeah, you have to dimple that before you rivet on the side skin. Which is strange because it doesn't say anywhere in the um, in the plans, only on the drawing. And that makes me nervous because maybe there are more things hidden on drawings where you have to kind of figure it out yourself. This is the bottom skin. So I dimple that too. That could all be dimpled actually with the uh, DRDT2. So you just dimple all the, let's say, flush rivets unless the material is too thick like the uh, the previously where I worked on the um, the skin for where, where the tail wheel is that was just too thick and so I just countersunk that but here you can uh, very easily use uh, dimpling after this dimple session I will clean it up and then um, prime the skins. There's actually the next day, or maybe a few days later, I'm not sure actually. And I continue. If you have a few hours off or an hour off, you can already start working, so that's good. I can't imagine you have to do this with a with a hammer and a, in the old-fashioned way. That would be really hard work, I guess. Alrighty. Yeah, try a few holes. And now we use a squeezer for all the other parts. And as you can see, that also goes very fast, but of course you can only do it where it's close to the edges. You will not be able to do it in the middle. But it's a good thing, because those were actually the parts which were hard with the DRDT2. So that's good. Ah, I use uh, an old solder iron to... Um, To define all the parts that you actually have to um, prime on the outside. Why would you for prime that? Because there are other skins that overlap that. So that's why I do it that way. Some people use rulers and try to make it very, you know, straight. I, I don't care. So yeah, next thing is dimpling all the flanges from the um, bulkheads, all the bulkheads. I think most could be done with the squeezer. Yeah, I think all of them could be done with the squeezer actually. You don't have to do the top part, or you, you're, I don't think you're allowed to do the top part, because that should only be done after you have um, match drilled that. 
so I don't go higher than the second stiffener. Talking about stiffeners, you also have to dimple all the stiffeners. Maybe you can countersink them, and maybe that would work. I'm not sure, but I'd rather not. I mean, you need a strong construction, so uh, I decided to dimple them. I use some scratch part pads for um, scuffing it up, as they call it. It's kind of removing, uh, it's like sanding paper, but then very, uh, especially for aluminum, and it's very uh, light. Um, this way the primer holds better, although I know that I forgot it once and it actually looks very good, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's that important. But, what the heck, I'll do it anyway. So the bull cuts were already primed, because I thought that I needed to do that earlier, uh, which is apparently not the case. Uh, there is actually the thick piece of uh, aluminum. And the last part before priming is using some degreaser. I use a water-based degreaser and uh, yeah, clean up everything so I can start priming it. Next time, continuing building my pie in the sky.